Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us. Akila, do you want to start off from your side? I would love to. So hi guys, my name is Akila Stewart and this workshop is to show how to basically take your waste and upcycle it into something functional um, to keep the life around a lot longer. This is highlighting the um, how we can use waste or use things that are in within your vicinity, raw materials, and create a circular design or product. And so our goal today is to take plastic bags and rework them into bags, but also kind of leaving that space open for you guys as well to explore and creating just a fabric like material out of these plastic bags that can be used for various other things like hats and garments and shoes and however you want to do it. But you don't have to be an expert. And that's why we're here to, to kind of guide you along the way. But feel free to ask questions in the chat. And yeah, we have, I'll be fielding questions. I think Slow Factory will be here too, um, in case we need any support. But Akila, do you wanna talk about a little bit about your background? Yes, definitely. Um, so waste, we know is a resource. Um, and I started to basically figure that out once living in Hawaii, where there's lots of plastic that washes up on the shores from different countries and it creates the Pacific gyre, which is just basically a mound of plastic waste in the ocean. So while there, I realized, okay, we're having lots of movements on preventing or how we can prevent plastic waste, but what do we do with what's already accumulated? And I think that within the arts, we've always been resilient and always found ways to create something out of nothing. And that's where the recycled plastic bottle bag was born. So I use recycled plastic bottles and dead stock materials or wasted materials of various kinds and create new products. So bacha is the Haitian word for trash um, and waste, which is what we reintroduced back into production. These are some of the handbags here that are made from vintage fur pieces, as well as just old recycled leather, fringe, and plastic bottle. So here is some of the waste that we're, that's being used. It's everyday items, laundry detergent, oil containers, water, juice. Plastic is everywhere and we use it so much and it's just really another way to keep it out of the landfills, out of the oceans and turn it into a luxury item that you can pass down, handbags. So this is me here in my little room, my mini studio, basically making, making the product. So all of the bags are handmade as well which makes it super special to see a product made from the beginning all the way to the end, which a lot of times most things are not made that way. They're made uh, in pieces and then shipped to other places to have to be finished. So I'm also very proud of that fact as well. So you're cutting down on energy and oil in other places as well as not just the plastic, uh, the petroleum and the plastic, but also petroleum that's going into traveling for boats, ships, cars to make this product come to life. And Nicole, would you want to tell us about your work? Sure. I mean, this is like such an inspiration to learn from Akila. So my background is not so much within plastics, but just kind of waste in general. So I was working at a large fashion sportswear company for quite a few years doing graphic design. And while I was there, I realized like, the sheer amount of waste just in the industry, but then also within the offices themselves of these companies that are creating these products, like samples and strike offs and things that are coming in just to review. So like, think about a pair of shoes that you own. They probably had like three or four rounds of samples and they're half pairs, so they can't be donated. And they come in plastic bags, they come in all this shipping stuff. And so naturally just like sitting in an office surrounded by it, I was getting, angry but inspired to want to do something about it so then I decided to move on and do my own freelance career and that's where I'm at now so I just take 
secondhand things. So I thrift a lot of the items that I used, uh, trash, things that are just honestly in my house and available at any time to be upcycled and recreated. I think my ideology is just like anything can have a second life. Longevity is in everything that we have. We just have to find it and make it useful and find a purpose in it. And I always promote, like, you don't have to be an expert to do these things. Like this wasn't my background. Like I said, I was a graphic designer sitting at a computer. And so to go to the tangible route and creating something physically, I mean, that wasn't like the background. So this is a really good starting point if you're new and you just want to try something out. Or if you're an expert, I think it'll you'll have a good experience just having fun with these things. And just allowing yourself to explore and, and have fun with it, I guess. So yeah, these are just some of my pieces. So I take like hats and oven mitts and I source everything on like eBay and dead stock. And then now because of my relationship with the sportswear industry, I am given a lot of samples and things from these big companies that don't know what to do with them. And so I started hosting workshops and different events to get those dead stock and sample products to designers that need them. So that's been a really big goal of mine is to continue on that journey and connect young designers and independent designers with these brands that have all that stuff that they don't know what to do with. So yeah, <laughs> nothing is off limits as you can see. <laughs> Here's just the time lapse of kind of how I, my process has been like of just taking things from the ground up. So taking half pairs of shoes. I worked with like Goodwill and Salvation Army and those places that end up with soldier shoes of like half pairs of shoes and they don't know what to do with them. So I'll find ways to take them apart and reupholster things, which you'll see here, creating a reupholstered suitcase out of shoes. But I've done that with quite a few products now. But yeah, so that's about it. And I'm excited to get started and show you guys what to do with all this stuff. What is some of the hardest material that you've ever had to work with? Well, it's funny because like you would think it would be like shoes or something that's really thick and like just, I don't know, not as malleable, but I actually find that papers and like lighter, delicate things are for me harder to work with. Cause I kind of like, I get excited and I want to like sew it and, and move it around and do stuff, but I, it's fragile and you don't want to rip it. So, but I was going to ask you the same thing because with all these bottles and now like stepping into the world of plastics, it isn't as malleable. So how do you find like, what's the best and what's the worst type of bottle to work with? I think some of the best plastics, or yeah, some of the best plastics are definitely some of the more sturdier um, ones, like, you know, coffee, um, coffee containers or um, cookie jars. And they're really, really tough to break into. You know, we have to use like some serious tools, but by that time, we're not talking scissors anymore. Yeah. <laughs> But some of those plastics actually are super hard and it just makes me think like, wow, if it's taking me so long to break open this thing, how long it's going to take to to break down, which it never really does, because even in its smallest particle, it still is there and available. So it's very vital, the work that we're doing. Actually, it's super fun, but it's super necessary um, creativity to have to enter into these different realms. So I definitely would say, yeah, some heavy plastics are very tough to work with. But some of the easier ones are other different types of plastics. You know, you have your one and your two and your three and your number, many different number plastics, but and how do you source them? Like, is it just from things that you've used in your house or are you like a bottle collector on the streets? Like trying um, to find them? You know, I, I tried to be that girl. <laughs> I tried to be that girl on occasion. I look at all the bottles, you know, with like a side eye. Yeah, That's, I feel the same way. Like honestly, everything now like trash on the street and I'm always like kind of looking at it and I'm like, maybe, maybe not. Maybe I shouldn't touch that. <laughs> But I think that's a good thing. I think it's like you see the potential in it. And I hope that that's what people kind of get out of this today is like seeing the potential and things that they would otherwise throw away. Yeah, no, I think um, just pairing with different businesses, different local businesses that use plastic in their everyday. And they're always like, hey, 
you go through X amount of plastic, you know, in this amount of time, is it possible that we can do a pickup of our drop off? And yeah, and that's generally how I get the plastic besides side eyeing on the street. You know, you don't want to be too weird, you know, in New York. Yeah, <laughs> I, I feel that. <laughs> okay, cool. So I guess moving on to our materials list. So like we said, we want this to be like as as much as you can do. And if you're not actively doing it right now, maybe something that you could do later. So Akila, maybe run through what you're gonna be using today and then I'll run through mine. Great, so yes, it has plastic bags, but we, I've actually in my experimentation realized that you can use just about any type of plastic because it will all fuse under pressure and heat. So today I just have, this is a plastic from a jacket that was ordered. And of course, anytime you order anything, it's gonna come with this, it's friends plastic bag. And so yeah, I have actually that, which is super huge, but I'm gonna just fold it down and piece it together. I am gonna also use my sewing machine versus using hot glue. I also have my handy dandy scissors here and iron and thread and my sewing machine, which is not shown here. What are you gonna be using? Yeah, so I too have my bag of bags, which has come from under my kitchen sink, which I feel like a lot of people can relate to, but I have realized like the beauty of the graphics with plastic bags. I've saved this one for quite a while. You could see in my overhead cam, just like the beauty of which the graphics on these plastic bags have. And so just wanting to highlight that. So I have a couple of bags. I have a clear bag that I can sandwich over it to preserve the graphic, but we'll get into that. Um, and then I'm going to be teaching an alternate option. If you don't have a sewing machine, we can work with hot glue. And then we can also work with thread and needle, which I somewhere put my needle, but I will find that. Um, and then I have also clear fishing line in case like you don't have thread available, you can use dental floss. You can like, honestly, whatever you have available. I like using this clear fishing line because it doesn't matter what color you're sewing onto, you won't see the thread. And yeah, I have my scissors, my iron here. I know we recommended also, if you don't have an iron, a flat iron. If you have an older one, I would maybe suggest that just so you don't potentially ruin a good flat iron. And then we suggest to use paper. I know I have parchment paper. Akila, what kind of paper are you using for your? Um, I have a gift wrapping paper. Although you can also use, you know, printing paper if you have smaller squares. It just, um, you want to make sure that your paper always overlaps your plastic so you're not melting the plastic directly. The plastic should never come into direct contact with your iron or your flat iron or any type of heat or flame. So definitely just make sure that whatever paper that you're using, you can also use, you know, I've used the Trader Joe's bags, uh, paper bags and cut those open. Um, they're a little bit more heavy. Your print plate paper, just make sure that it overlaps your plastic. I think that's just generally the most important part. And especially if you are gonna use like a hair flat iron to just ensure that you're going to be going over the pieces with the plastic sandwich in, in between the paper. I just also want to add that the thicker the paper, the longer and maybe the slower um, ironing motion just to make sure that that pressure and that heat is still going to reach into your plastic. And you might have to try out different settings of your iron. I know that I've experimented with like higher heat versus lower heat at different time uh, levels. So that's up to you guys to figure out what you think works best for your method. I have a towel down just because I'm on a like a plasticky surface. So I just want to ensure that I'm not uh, burning what's under, but just be aware that you are applying heat to a flat surface. So just want to make sure that we're not ruining any of your guys's furniture. And then lastly, if you guys aren't close to a window or have proper ventilation, it's good to have some type of mask or which I think we all have at this point, at least I hope you do. And so just to make sure that you're not like directly breathing in the fumes of this, although I found out it is not 
too um, abrasive, but I uh, just want to make sure that everyone feels safe and feels comfortable along the way. And if something feels off or wrong, stop and reset. I just don't want anyone getting burnt or burning anything in their house. Okay. Yes, no, no burning in the house. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to be the voice of goddess over here. <laughs> Someone is asking if there are any alternatives to ironing. And I know we've discussed this briefly, but do you want to take a pass at that, Akila? I know you've experienced enough. I think ironing with an iron is the what we need for this workshop. But have you seen any other way? Yes, you, you definitely can. So we talked about using a hair flat iron, you know, the ones that are generally um, in this little snapping <laughs> type, I don't know, formation. But if you use that, you just want to make sure that one, your project is going to be that size, right? Because it, if you're going to use this ironing, which is like this, if you have a big piece of uh, plastic or a big project, you may only be able to reach a certain amount of it. So Besides using a flat iron, I don't know any other way, honestly, to have the same amount of equal pressure and the same amount of heat be evenly distributed across everything. You could try maybe a hair dryer, maybe, and just put your plastic and your paper on top and just try and do that, maybe. You, you need something that's going to distribute even heat and pressure. And I think, yeah, just trying different plastics also. Like I actually am quite partial to this thicker plastic, which things are shipped in. But yes, plastic bags, everything, putting all of the bits back together. It's all experimental, it's the best part. <laughs> yes, exactly. And then I guess we can probably start to get into it, but I think just technique wise, Maybe Akila, you could speak to this more, but I've learned that like the more layering, like if you were to fold a plastic bag, I think just a couple of times just to add those layers increases obviously the thickness of the material, but that's, that is up to you guys to figure out. I don't know if Akila, if there's any like ideal layering or how many pieces on top creates like the best effect. I really haven't figured yet like the best effect. However, like you said, just as much plastic as you want to create more thickness. I used about six bags for one side and then six bags for another side. But that's also because like mine are quite large. Actually, my bags are a little bit larger. So I kind of like, I love the graphic. And so I, I also have a notepad of uh, <laughs> bags here. I love that. <laughs> I kind of use about six bags and it creates like this, it doesn't probably seem as thick because it all gets melted and fused down together. But I like the, um, the width, I like to keep it kind of big as a bag. And so therefore I just will take more bags, six bags, six to 10 bags, I think for a side, but I use three, I think three bags on one side is also the least amount of bags to use without it um, being just as flimsy. But if you use six or more bags, you're definitely going to get the type of durability that you want to be able to use this bag again and again and again. But I love the idea also of just making a smaller size and just having it being able to fold over again and again and be able to achieve the same density with one bag or maybe one piece of plastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I think today I'll, I'll do that. I think I'll focus on making a smaller bag like this, um, which is more of just like a pouch bag. I mean, you can add straps to it, um, which I literally just punctured holes in the sides of it. And this was done with just hot glued seams. Um, so, and it's still pretty functional and pretty thick. And that was just folding and sandwiching the same bag, like just, I think three or four times over. So it created like quite a few layers to it. Does it work with compostable bags? Also try that um, with the Trader Joe's bags. Didn't achieve as much fusion. So yes, you can do it with compostable bags if you're talking about like the super thick reusable ones or if you're talking about like the vegetable produce, the really thin ones, you can always add those in as extra layers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
have you tried any of like the super thick bags um yes i've found that like it requires a long time under the iron um and i got a little bit impatient and cranked up the heat on my iron and it started to bubble a little bit so go low and slow i think maybe just for like good pressure for a long time but do play around with your heat settings because if it's too low in heat it might not fuse as well um, but you don't want to burn it which i've only done once but it was like a very slight burn i think you'd have to leave the iron on for quite a long time to like burn through it but yeah, just, I think it's, it's all of the experimenting. I keep saying it, but it's like, it is so true. <laughs> yeah, and I also feel like, so with the graphic, if you do want to keep the graphic on there, I usually put it inside of the clear plastic to preserve the graphic, but I also put it face down because mm -hmm. when you just said about bubbling, sometimes the heat is super intense and it just starts to shrink the plastic tremendously <laughs> yeah. and if you're ironing that on your graphic your graphic is going to shrink and be distorted mm -hmm. so I always put my graphic face down and so whatever kind of distortion happens it'll be on the back side which yeah <laughs> I think like laying down the bag that you want to focus on is a good start if it has handles uh, I would suggest cutting them off and then you can also trim along the bottom here because then it helps open it up a little bit because there's all this extra material on the sides that you want to be able to get to. So yeah, let's just maybe show them. Your, your full plastic bag will have your handles there right on the top and your handles on the bottom. And you're just gonna create a square or a rectangular shape by cutting both of those from the bottom and also off the top and you'll just have like this square inside or rectangular shape. And you don't have to worry about getting it super perfect and cutting off all these pieces because we also want to create as least waste as possible. So what I generally do is just take this and if I want it to be smaller, I'll take it and fold it back and create the shape that I am looking for without having to cut anything off because once you iron this, you're going to fuse it all together anyway. So no need to create more waste. And you can, all these like smaller scraps that come off of it as well, like you can add it back in. So I've taken like smaller pieces like this and actually put it, sandwich those, all of them together into like a clear one. And so you kind of get this nice like layering effect of all the scraps and if there's different colored bags and stuff it could look really nice so like this isn't garbage like this is you can still continue to use this because it's still the same material say it again nicole preach <laughs> i love she's like this isn't garbage yes this is not yeah, on a t-shirt like this isn't garbage so i'm just putting this plastic down inside of this other <laughs> clear plastic and then I'm going to start to fold and shape how I want the bag to look. So now I have a super huge piece. I'm going to cut off the rest of this and use it for another project. I also found that if you use dry flowers and you want to put them inside of plastic, this plastic and iron over it, it makes such a beautiful, beautiful design as well. Do you have any examples of that? I haven't seen that yet. <laughs> oh, I did have it. But you see, I cleaned and then when you clean, things happen, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <Feel that. laughs> things get clean, but things also get put away in places that you may not remember. Um, so I'm also going to put, see if I can put this back inside one more time, if it still works. I'm also going to be using this as lining. The thing that's so great about this plastic um, is that you honestly can make it firm enough to do so many things. Yeah. 
I mean, if you're camping, this is a perfect item to bring out to the camping or to the beach. It can get, you know, dirty and muddy and you can just rinse it off. Um, it's light, it's compact, and it's made with what you would normally throw away, most important part. And then also just to note, like if there's any stickers or that kind of stuff like on it, try your best to take it off or even just cut it out. It's okay if there's like a small hole in it because it will fuse up. Um, but just, yeah, I just want to avoid any extra things that could burn. I'm like, Nicole, you're calling me out. My medium sign, my little medium sticker. Sorry, it's okay. If it's small, it usually doesn't cause an issue. But like with my luck, I would have like the smallest thing and the whole thing would like go up in flames. So Good question, ladies. I am again the voice of goddess. Um yes. someone is asking, do we put all the bags in one single one? Can you explain like the layering again, just so it's very, very clear? I mean, I I probably have a different method than you do because I'm making smaller ones. So I'm just like taking one bag that's, this bag's already pretty thick. Maybe if I was using a thinner bag, such as this one, I would probably do maybe two of them. But because this one is probably the thickness of two bags together, I'm just folding the back two to create that extra layer. So it's probably about, it's like four layers big. And then I'm <clears throat> I'm adding an extra just plastic, clear plastic over the top of it to preserve the graphic. But that's, again, that's like my instinct of how many I need. I, it will probably turn out to be similar to the, the first one I did. That's like, I like the thickness of this, but if you want it thicker, you can add more onto it. What I'm doing is I am, there is two different ways. So like you said, right, you can put the bags one on top of the other in a uh, just a layering kind of way which is completely fine it'll give you the same output but the only reason that i'm taking this bag and sticking it inside of the plastic bag stuffing them inside of each other is just because i want to preserve the graphic so i'm going to take that bag and stick it inside of a plastic bag but normally you can just go ahead and put all of the bags on top of each other, just like so. It's completely fine. It'll give you the same effect. This is only so the graphic that's on the bag does not come off because it will rub off as I found also on my own bag. So this is just really a protection sheet. Okay. Are you good to begin your ironing? I am warming up. How about you? Exactly. Just, you know, I, I don't feel anything at this point between like hot gluing my fingers together, sewing my fingers together. I literally have one. I don't know if you can see where I stabbed myself last the other night. The, worst, the absolute worst. They're like, oh, we love your bags. I'm like, I hope so, because it's literal blood, sweat, and tears. I know. But literal I, blood. Halfway through a project and realized that I had a cut, and I was like, did I bleed on this project? Like, it can get violent making things. You have to, have to always be aware. <laughs> be very vigilant. Well-lit areas. Well-lit <laughs> uh, not sleep deprived that makes a big difference because as soon as you're like super tired just oh you know, my everything, god everything kind of compromises um i used to do shoes and it was always like you know the first shoe you do so great and it's all great it's like eyeliner you know you like you mm -hmm. get one eye so perfect and then you get to the next shoe and you're like oh god geez um, but yeah, sleep is a, a very, a very vital part of this puzzle, design puzzle. We have two more questions here, ladies, while you are doing your uh, work, your amazing work. I'm so excited to see the results. Someone is asking, could we use disposable gloves as one of the layers? Um, um, disposable plastic gloves as one of the layers. Interesting. Um, I don't know that other than the like latexy stuff, but if you have a latex free, then maybe. I think that most most things. Okay, so most of the time, plastic. If you bring it near heat, it's going to melt. So I think 
even though it's a glove, I, I do think that with pressure and heat, it's going to create something. What? I don't know. <laughs> I cannot tell you what it will create. But especially <laughs> if it's just a layer, if you're just using it for um, thickness, yeah. That would Another be a cool. question also, thank you so much. What is the iron setting? I, I asked you guys that question when we were practicing together and you guys were like, just put it on. <laughs> I, mine is like between, there's like silk, synthetic wool, cotton, um, and linen. And I have mine somewhere in between like silk and wool. I find that if I start going up to like cotton linen, it starts to get like real hot. Um, so I prefer the low and slow method and kind of see how the plastic reacts. And a lot of the time, like it won't maybe look the way you want it to on the first go, but like you, as you do this and as you find like what works for you, then you can adjust. Thank you. I said um, iron between silk and wool. I was going to say, so I'm the complete opposite. I have no patience for <laughs> for anything. So I'm like full on cotton. Um, but I'm also using thicker plastic. So I think it's always better to start thin or start low and then build up. I don't know if you guys can see, but I just basically ironed this one side and this is about, uh, let me see, one, two, three. This is three layers actually. So now this side is completely fused and I just still have this side. So you can see the difference of how everything is PC, PC, and then it starts to actually create one textile like feel over here. So I see it's all together. And it's really, it's ultra, it's so simple. It's very simple. Well, you're very careful. Um, I think the main thing is ironing the plastic is to be very careful with that part. But after that, the heat really does the job. Just go slow over it, apply some pressure, start low, as Nicole said, <laughs> don't follow my crazy advice. I also am the girl that, like I said, uh, stitched her finger. So if that gives you any idea of my process. And then also, this isn't something I've experienced, but I looked it up because there can be bubbling that can occur. So if you have like a pin or something that you could just kind of like poke the bubble and let out some of the air. But if you're flattening it out enough, it should not create bubbles. But honestly, it's it all varies. It really depends on like the type of plastic, the amount of heat, like this, I feel like could have been a little bit thicker, but I also, once you take it off the iron, you have to let it sit for a few to get like hard again, because it is still a little bit malleable, but I think, I think because I'm going low and slow, it requires a little bit more. So maybe I should try your imp impatient method and just go all in. <laughs> I'm not liable. I'm not liable for the impatient method. I just sponsor it. Like even with the higher heat, I still like to go over it pretty slowly just because I want to make sure that, like you said, there is no bubbling and that all of the plastic is going to fuse. Mm -hmm. This one is uh, two different types of thickness, two different types of plastic, so it may take a little bit longer for it to all come together. So don't even worry about your plastic also, like if it has a tear, if it has a hole, um, the heat will will fuse it together. I think I'm almost done with this side. And then the real fun begins when you start to see your bag come to life or your little pouch. Um, that for me is the best part when you have an idea and then you start seeing it take shape. Yes, agreed. And then I'm just, you don't have to, and we talked about this too, like allowing yourself to like have these more organic shapes of the layering. Um, but I'm trimming off just my top layer of plastic. Um, but like I said, I'll be able to reuse that later as I sandwich it in between other things just to continue using it up. Um, but just to clean it up. A bit. I think I have like a whole box of plastic cuttings Yes. 
All right, Boston, anyone? <laughs> Super excited. So now that it's this big sheet, pretty thick, now I'm going to start to just mold it to the shape that I like. Another side. And it starts to get like hard and like, it's definitely not what it was, which is like, <laughs> you really start to see like how far this can be pushed. And like the more layers, the more different things that you add onto it, just kind of the crazier you can make it. Cool. So I'm going to do hand sewing. Akila, are you going to, you're going to use your machine? I'm going to use my machine, but guys also feel free if you have um, a stapler or hot glue gun. What else could we use to adhere these pieces together? I want people to get creative. I like the stapler idea. I think it's cool. So for what I'm just doing, I'm making a very simple pouch bag. And so I folded it inside out because um, I want the graphic to be on the outside. And I'm just stitching it up along the sides. I folded it and you can see, I was just gonna stitch it here and here, and then I'm gonna flip it inside out and you'll see a little bag form. But mine's a pouch. Mine's not like a full tote bag or anything. Um, but if you're just trying this out and you just want to see what it looks like, I think this is a good starting point. I'm going to jump in here and ask one of the questions in the Q&A. Jasmine Rocco is asking, could you use the iron to meld the seams together or would it be too weak? Um, I've tried it. It was too weak for me, but I think that there are ways that you could possibly sandwich in more plastic to get that seam. Mine opened up as soon as I put stuff in it. Um, and then same, I think like the hot glue gun gives a similar effect where it starts to kind of melt it, but it might not give you like a long lasting effect, but feel free to prove me wrong on that. I might not have just like gotten it to the right heat setting or it just might not have been as secured, um, but it's definitely possible, I think. I think so too, but I, I feel like the same with the glue. The hot glue, it's gonna be used together because of the heat. Mm -hmm. but to just iron the side, you'd have to, I feel like we'd have to have super heat. Yeah. Sorry if I'm not showing this clear enough on the bottom here. All right, I think my ironing part is over. Now moving on to the sewing. I'm actually going to complete this with my uh, fresh graphic that I love. Now that I've been looking at all of these plastic bags, I've been noticing so many things on them. Yeah. And so you've incorporated this into your actual like work practices, haven't you? Like, this have you seen that? Did you notice? I have noticed. <laughs> um, yeah, I definitely now, because like you said, you, we, there's so much that you can do with it. And it's like, why not? So um, generally I use plastic bottles, but plastic bags is, and plastic bottles is um, one combination. Uh, I, I'd love to use all different types of waste to create bags, honestly. And I think you do like, honestly, the best job at showing like how far those things can be pushed. Cause like, I didn't think about those, like the bottles and like laundry detergent and that kind of stuff. It's like, you don't always try to like take that out of its original context and see what you could do with it. 
Um, and so like, I think you're just like a prime example of like how to upcycle, how to use waste. And I mean, I hope people look at the things that they have in their house that like they throw away and especially like single use plastics, like something like this, or like the amount that um, a plastic that comes in if you order takeout, like I think there's options now for you to suggest like not to send whatever utensils or just any of the things that they send within like the packaging of it. But I know anytime I've ordered food, like there's always like silverware and napkins and like all these things. And it's like, what do we do with them at some point? Like, you know, you have to, instead of just continuing to throw them out, I think it's like, first of all, taking a look at our consuming habits, which I mean, I think that's, that's step number one of like how much we're buying, how much we're consuming and like what we can avoid. But then like, just throwing it away is like peace of mind for you, but that becomes like a long-term problem. And that's something we don't think about a lot when we throw things away. Cause it's like, you just bring it out to the trash and then someone takes it away. And like, you have the luxury of not having to like look at it, but it's going to go sit somewhere and just, you know, sit there for years and years for your entire lifetime. And like, that's sad. Oh, for probably four lifetimes yeah. actually for it to even start to um and the thing is it's not okay it's starting to break down the breakdown is still just as toxic and still just as dangerous and it's actually quite unfortunate that it is pushed on the consumer because if we don't have any other options of how we receive our items our goods our food then people are going to have no choice but to use it so i i definitely think it needs to come from the the top to really make a, a decent amount of change because I can go somewhere that that's the only option is plastic and then what are you going to do? You know, and that's honestly not a fair take on consumers. It's, it's definitely the job of corporations need to be held responsible and accountable. Agreed. And that goes for like so many industries too. I mean like fashion in general. It's it's just awful the amount of waste and the amount of water and like when when we talk about sustainable like the slow factory and Akila and I like we mean sustainable in every single way of the word like sustainable wages like how you treat your employees like how things are actually made and like what's going on behind the scenes like there needs to be action taken with these large companies that are like there's only so much we could do as consumers and I think it's important for us to put pressure and like consume less and do all these things but honestly like that comes from the top and yeah that's it's crazy it's honestly like it's sad that we're we're fighting this fight still and like things are not going as fast as they should so yeah okay I'm gonna use this machine it might be a little bit loud so excuse me guys for about 20 seconds uh-oh, uh-oh, screw it. I'm like, it's uh, on zigzag mode. I've never tried that before, but let's, oh, why not? Percent. There is a, a bunch of questions. We can start tackling them as you guys are sewing. Um, one of them is regarding the slide that was up about wish cycling. One, what is the best way to educate myself and hopefully others about what is actually recyclable? Are municipal waste management websites best for that? It gives local information or are there general resources to reference as well? And two, has anyone seen examples of cities or countries educating about wish cycling? I'd be curious what examples there are of trying to educate the public more broadly on this because I haven't seen experienced or uh, seen or experienced any examples of it myself. Thank you. So that's from Taylor Lawrence. So the term wish cycling was introduced to us by waste management when we did the landfill as museums field trip. And it was introduced to us by their team because they it's an observation that they've uh, they've noticed that people would put things in the recycling bin wishing that it would get recycled. And that's where that terminology comes from. And Waste management put together a link on their website, but it just explains like when a, a plastic gets to be contaminated, when it doesn't get to be recycled, etc. And you know, there's also a lot of um, interesting independent documentaries that show that 
even if the, the item has the three uh, arrows of recycling on the bottom, that it says it's recyclable, it doesn't mean that it's actually going to get recycled because the technology does not support that type of plastic. That type of plastic cannot be broken down into pellets, I think they're called, and built back into a plastic. So there's a lot of obscurity about this. And, a, and I wouldn't necessarily say that the municipality or even waste management, I mean, waste management, that's what they cannot recycle. And they're going to be very clear about what is not recyclable in their facilities, which means it, it's not going to be recyclable in the United States because they kind of own monopoly on waste <laughs> management in the U.S. So but of course, chime in, Akila and Nicole, if you have any ideas uh, about where to find more information about if a plastic is recyclable. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot of information online for, for better or for worse, because like it is, it's hard and it varies by like where you live. I mean, I know my parents, um, like their recycle stream, they won't take bottles if it has caps on it, but that doesn't like, there's other cities and places that will accept bottles that have caps on it, but it also depends on like what type of bottle it is and like where you are disposing of it. So, I mean, I think I don't have all the solutions to that, but if you try to look for more like city specific and local things about it, but I know just like one thing to note, I actually had a kind of an interesting experience last year. I was in China doing a project and they had me do this like thing where it was like, they gave me a bunch of different items and they were like, it was like fake items, like miniatures. And they had like a, like six different trash cans. And one was like hazardous waste. One was like whatever plastics, paper, like all these things. And it was like almost like a trick quiz because they gave me something like coconut shells. And how that is recycled is like, it's not like a compostable thing. I don't know, you're, you could be really surprised by like what is and what's not able to be recycled or composted or even like things that are considered hazardous waste and like, like nail polish and that kind of stuff. I mean, definitely wild. I will continue to educate myself alongside of all of you because there's a lot to learn. Absolutely. There's a lot to learn and constantly changing information. There is another question that I know Akila is going to answer. Have you ever tried layering things like dried flowers or decals between the plastic layers? Yes, and it works perfectly. I think just the less bulky, the more flat the item can be, the better. So anything dried flowers, though, I tried also petals that were not dry and while I was ironing it, it smelled so good. It was so amazing. And then in a couple of days, the whole bag was full of mold. Oh, no. <laughs> so if you're going to do flowers, definitely wait until they're fully dried out or like tea or something. But I also like, you know, little cards or like Nicole mentioned, like all of the scraps that you cut off from the bottom and the tops of the bags, you can save those and you can put them back inside of maybe a transparent or a clear plastic and just line them up and you can basically just create your own little pattern with cutoffs. But yes, you can put things in between the plastic if it's transparent. If it's not, then what's the point? Yeah. I'm currently flipping my bag. I know, I see that. It's so exciting. Ah! Wow, Akila, I want that bag. Put some things on it. I want it. Uh, with the Bible verse. <laughs> There's I mean, my big reveal is to flip it and see what happens. <laughs> But there is also ShopRite's bowl and basket, if you're into that. Um. <laughs> there is also another question here about if you wanted to make a collage from smaller plastic pieces, can you recommend a good way to keep them all together while ironing? Would you recommend stitching them together beforehand? That's going to be so hard because... It's so thin and so, well, I would think it would be so hard, but I think maybe just put like a little spot of glue on and arrange everything, not a crazy amount, just like literally enough to make it stick and arrange your collage before you put, you know, your plastic on top. But I think to stitch them together would be because 
as Nicole was saying, sheer materials, very thin uh, plastic materials are very hard to work with. There's bunching, there's holes, paper. But like Nicole said, prove me wrong. Do it. Let's see. That's just um, <laughs> my experience. I think it would be a little difficult. I, I would use glue or some type of hot glue or something to make the pattern and then put the plastic on top of it. So now I'm going to create some handles because this looks perfect. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just using a hole puncher, but you can also just take like, this mine is like entry level bag version, guys, just to like let you know. So if you hey, Nicole, what are you trying to say? I'm showing off here. No, I'm just saying that I'm not up to your level of expertise. So for anyone that's like just trying to just trying to get by. <laughs> but I I strive to be you, Akila, honestly. Um, but I just I used a hole puncher, but you could also use just like an exacto or a scissor and just trim a little thing. And I'm I'm using just scrap rope and shoelaces to create a string bag. But feel free to like experiment ironing the like plastic scraps to make an actual bag out of it. Like so many possibilities. And to that point, Nicole, someone asked earlier, what do I do with the because they're ironing their bags right, and so it's uneven. And I said that they can go ahead and cut the bag in the ways and shapes that they see fit. Can you guys uh, confirm that? <laughs> yes. I mean, I left mine raw at the top, but the other one that I made, I clean finished it where I just tucked over like the top layer and, and kind of cut it down and trimmed it. But I like the more organic, like rough edge type vibe, but that is up to you. But just keep your scraps. That's my suggestion. Your scraps, agreed. I was also going to mention your scraps. So I took a lot of the scraps also and braided them down and then um, ironed it again, which also creates like a super nice, um, either you can put it on the edge as a trim or you can use it as like smaller handles to attach to um, something or like a little flap. I think the whole idea in general is just to show that you can use alternative materials and in any and every way possible. Let your creativity just really run wild. Definitely braiding it. Um, I'm going to use this strip of plastic as the handle. We're going to see how that goes here. Um, but my whole idea, like, yes, I love creating bags and creating products, but the thing that I want to do the most is design systems for how we can reintegrate, capture these items and reintegrate them before it gets to the landfill and it's deemed um, unworthy. That's um, a large part of my work moving forward is not just to create also products, but the system to allow those products to be made in a way that, um, reduces pollution. And like just doing it so elegantly and like educating people in a, in a non, I don't know, aggressive way. I think educating through art and like through actual design and product is the way to do it. Because like shoving information down people's throats or like forcing them to buy into like this idea of sustainability isn't going to make people want to approach it you know like this is a very nice and fun way of approaching sustainability um i think artists are needed in every industry i think that a lot of the times when you keep writers with writers and doctors with doctors engineers with engineers you tend to get the same old engineer ass answer <laughs> or the same old you know writer ass answer and i think that with artists in general or creativity in general. I won't even just pigeonhole it to artists, but creativity I think has had bad press as far as only being into, you know, um, being crafty or being able to paint or this or something, but creativity is honestly a problem solving skill. I love that you said that too, like any, any industry, like it is just, it's problem solving and like, we need, we need people in every profession to like come with a creative solution for these things because it's like, we need, we just need to step up. We need to, it's important that we do. This is, there we go. We got something. 
uh, uh, I know. I'm like, hold on, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> I mean, Society. the amount of time it took me to make this like little bag versus yours, but <laughs> I'm like, I'm just so inspired by everything you've been doing. Oh, I love that. So much love over here. And I just want to tell also our participants that, you know, these bags can be used to put in like, you know, um, change or put in some tools or put in, you know, can be used to instead of using a Ziploc bag, they can be, you know, your home bags that, that you use at home. You don't need to make something that is going to immediately be fashionable and don't discard it if it's not immediately to the level of like, a fashionable bag. So what I'm trying to say is that these uh, finding usage for these bags is the priority. Look at that. Yay. Um, I'm it, into it now. That's my cleanup. <laughs> yes. Um, so, okay. Another question here. Have you guys tried to layer fabric in between the plastic bag to create patterns or design? Would that work? Yes. That <laughs> it will work so cool anything you want to sandwich in between the plastic let me tell you guys it will use and something that I actually want to try now is putting the fabric inside of the plastic but also stitching around the uh the fabric pieces inside like you can almost make like flowers you know take a piece of fabric and you put a thing and then you can sew around it the possibilities are so endless man when i'm telling you guys <laughs> who doesn't have plastic laying around like please share your final designs with us and your progress like if you didn't do it this like in this setting like in the future if you are able to make it we would love to see it like or your notes i would love to see use the hashtag waste study when you do post it so that we can track it there's another question do you have experience with painting directly onto your bags or does anyone have tips of paint to use on the plastic bag. Nicole. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine, but I would I would just be careful of like fumes coming off of that. But I would suggest to try it and like also trying afterwards. I mean, I'm not an expert in painting, but I, I will do research and let you know what I come up with as well. Hey, yes. So good. <laughs> Um, another question, what sort of thread would you suggest to use that would have greater strength to last long? I like denim thread. I like thread that's used generally for jackets or coats or denim. Have you tried it with like a nylon thread before? Never with a nylon thread. I, I have not either. I only did like my regular like sewing thread and that worked fine, but I wasn't going through like a ton of layers, but I did, when I just hand sewed it, I used fishing line and that was pretty strong and went through fairly easily. Yes, and dental floss, yes. <laughs> if you don't, if all else fails, I saw someone write it, dental floss can work. And also the stuff that you use, like your parchment paper and stuff like that can be used again and again. So hold on to that. It's oh yeah, but like this is definitely Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> I mean, I just love everything about it. And I love this one. I want this one. <laughs> the other one that I had before I protected the graphic, which I still dig all the way because I'm like, it's like a mood ring. It's like you got it at one and then it just patinas over time like nice leather. Yes. And like, that's the beauty of it. Cause like, she's able to elevate her process where she's like, okay, this is, this didn't work as I thought it would. So like, let me try it this way. And like, now she figured out how to do the plastic overlay, which has saved the graphics. So, but I don't know, it really depends on what you like. I like the one that kind of rubbed off a bit. Oh, that's really cool too. So good. Be so good, guys. If you go online to the website, definitely check them out. They're up there. I just love it. Like, I just need to experiment all day, you know? That's it. That's all I need to do. But yeah, same. Like, 
now you're making shoes. Now I can add them with leather, put them on back. Like there's so much. I want to do a bucket hat. That's honestly my next. I think the lining is so nice to be able, like she said, to be able to just clean that off very easily. So I'm thinking of things that would um, cons- be more convenient with mm-hmm. this plastic instead of some type of textile. Like I even have one that I'm doing this not on the outside, the plastic on the outside, but the plastic on the inside. This one, which is, it has it's just really nice leather anyway. So instead of using regular textile for to line it on the inside, I will just use this plastic and see how that goes. Yeah. That's, I mean, and if there's any footwear designers in here as well, like reinforcement on the inside or like heel counters is a waste issue as well because it's plastic and a lot of the time, like what's supporting your foot other than this invention that I have, but to give you support within like your heel here is like a big plastic piece. So like, what if we found ways to like use this as the reinforcement? So there, honestly, there, it could be solutions to a lot of problems and don't, don't mind my brain. <laughs> Someone is asking, where do you guys source your dead stock fabric? And I know Hi Fatra, Akila, she knows. Um, yeah, there is Queen of Raw, there's Fab Scrap, there's wearable collections. Um, I think generally most areas will have some type of textile collection. If you um, just look that up, wherever it is that you are. Um, but yeah, mostly places that collect textiles from the community. And also a lot of brands, a lot of brands who never want to say their name because sustainability isn't their thing. But um, a lot of brands do actually give a lot of their fabrics and textiles that are not proprietary anyway to groups. And I get, I get them from from brands and from community. Yeah, same. I mean, I I've have a relationship now with some of these larger brands that are trying to find uses for this. So like, that's my goal. And honestly, like what I'm striving to do is become like the resource and like almost the liaison between like the designer that's looking for those scraps and those dead stock fabrics and whatever. And these bigger brands that have a ton of it, that they their only solution to get rid of it is to burn it when there's people out here looking for uh, materials. So that's kind of my ongoing project. But if you need any type of contact for that, like I can, I'm here to help. And that's a lot of what the workshops that I do uh, focus on that. When, when we're in person, when we're actually making a lot of these brands, we'll supply it. And then I do a lot of, like I mentioned before, thrifting online, but just being aware and mindful of like how you thrift and uh, the communities and and like how how you thrift is is a really big topic and that's a whole other conversation. But like thrifting here in New York has become just like a very gentrified version of thrifting and you just want to be aware of how you're accessing those products. But there is a lot, there's pallets and pallets if you walk through Brooklyn just to see like, uh, warehouses full of pallets of stacked clothes on top of each other. And so it's like just having to find, finding ways to make that more accessible and um, for people to be able to wear the items or to be able to get them in the hands of designers that need them. So Another question. I'm wondering what I can do with old sneakers, clothes, accessories that might not have the time or energy to repurpose. Tricky. I mean, I don't know if, you guys have like suggestions. I know that donations have been really hard, but like, please don't like take the easy route and just throw it away. During these times, I know it's a burden to like have to hang on to things until like donation centers open back up again. But um, yeah, it is it is a tricky situation. I, I feel you on that because there's really not that many other solutions. But unless you guys have any alternatives of like, direct stream of like donation to X designer or person in need. I definitely have no idea besides if it's not in your neighborhood, if you'd want to, you know, ship it to another center, you know, like I said, New York, we have lots of resources. I'm not sure if that person, it doesn't sound like they're in New York, but yeah, you know, maybe look at your next 
the next state over if see if there there's any programs there. I mean, it's really depending on how dedicated you are and how um, how much you want to keep that those clothing and that textile in motion. But there's there's always a way. I would just keep saying research. And on this note, I think we're going to close. It's already 1.30. There's someone asking for your email, Nicole, for the sourcing. So you don't have to send your email to if you don't want to, but if you want to connect with. It's in my bio on Instagram. You can you can email me. Uh, my Instagram's at Nicole McLaughlin and then Akila. Is uh, Hi Fatra, H-I-F-A-T-R-A. And thank you all so much for joining us. This was so my first. So excited to see what you made. Please send it to yes. us. Yes. Oh, yes. Share, share, share. Share. Please share and, and tag products or projects that you guys do. Any discovery or findings that you make, please let us know. Thank you so much, Akila. Thank you, Nicole. This was so fun. We'll do it again next semester and have a good day. Bye. Bye. Bye.